So this is the bag sort video for the second bag in the row F kit covering blocks F7 through F13. So I'm going to go ahead and get my book back out so that I can use this for sorting. And we're going to start with F7. F7 is going to work directly from the book. There's no modifications. And so I will get my pieces poured out and see what we got going on in here. So I'm going to pile these like always into similar piles or shapes, piles of similar shapes just because then it's easier later for me to come back and look for stuff. So we're looking for triangles, smaller triangles for the flying geese units, the bigger triangles as well, plus two sizes of squares and some um, border pieces for the outside. And I think I've got this one. That one looks to be a little big, so that's not correct. So I will uh, start sorting all of these out and see where we are with pieces. So I've got all my pieces laid out. Um, one little thing, there's not pieces for this size but there is two pieces and this is the only option that we have for this entire set so this actually is the same size as this so instead of a log cabin effect it's it's one of these other I don't know what the name of it is and now I'm screwing this up but then this goes here so you've got two of these size and two of this size so that it makes the block. It's not going to make a difference because they're all the same color um, but that's how the pieces work out. So now I'm going to take my fine point sharpie and label each one of these pieces F7. So now I've got my pieces labeled. I'm going to mark my focus fabric which in this picture is the yellow. So I've got the center and all of the side triangles, the smaller of the two sizes. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the outside rectangles are focus fabric as well. So, okay, so we get these two, these two, these two, these two, center, and the four. If you have a directional fabric, you want to make some decisions to see if you want to put it a specific direction at this time. I use a ball a ballpoint pen to change it up from what I've already used. But in the meantime, I am going to take a sandwich baggie and take a piece of paper and label this F7 and stick this in the bag with the pieces and then I can move on to the next block. Next we go to F8. F8 is it also work directly from the book and um, we have the same type of thing here with the flying geese unit, two smaller triangles with a larger one. We've got some pieces on the outside border. You're going to find a um, double slant piece, I guess that would be parallelogram, but anyway. And then you've got some little teeny tiny squares and some small-ish rectangles. So I've got this, it goes here, and I've got some smallish rectangles, and there's a center square, and there's side squares. It'd be really nice if these were the same size, but they don't look like they are. So we'll have to see and we'll have to label that if they're not. Um, the parallelogram things are smaller than they show in the book. And that is not an issue because it is the only option for this section, first of all. And secondly, when we go to find the matching pieces. This would be the longer of the two. And this would be also the longer of the two. Here we go. And the shorter one fills that gap. 
So if you put this on the line, and you put this here, and then you find another shorter one, which I think is this one, you will end up filling that space. So it's not the end of the world that this is smaller because these are bigger to compensate for the size difference, but at the end of the day, you need to have a shape of this size, which you do. And nobody's going to see the difference because they're not like going to compare it to the book or anything. So um, I'm going to get these all laid out and in their proper position. And then we can move on from there. So as I'm going through here, I'm noticing some differences. These are, are three of the four for the corner pieces here. But I come across these squares and one of them is extremely close to the other. If I line this top line up exactly, like exactly, then I get this little tiny bigger step. I don't even know if you can see that. But the one on the right is very slightly bigger than the one on the left. So how do I know what I need? Because they both look like they're the right size. So what you do in this particular case is you're going to take that little rectangle that it's supposed to be the same size and figure out which one is the right one. So if I take it and put it to the one on the left and I put it exactly at the top, it appears to be slightly bigger, but I want to confirm that. And then we're talking like a 32nd of an inch. This is a very, very small difference. Okay, so the one that's slightly bigger is the one that's going to go with the rectangle. So make sure that you get the right piece. It may not matter for this block, but it might matter for the next block. Sometimes this kind of thing is no big deal, and sometimes it's a giant big deal. So I just try to be as accurate as physically possible when I am available to, or when I'm able to do that. So, and I'm going to find the fourth square and finish laying out my pieces. So now I've got my pieces laid out and it's time to mark them with F8. Now I've got all my pieces labeled and it is time to indicate focus fabric and so starting from the center the center square and the little teeny tiny squares are going to be focus fabric and then the big triangles surrounding the center unit and then the squares in the corner three four and then the little par parallelogram pieces three Four. And those are all of the focus fabric pieces. So we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then the one. If you have a directional fabric, now is the time to indicate which way you want it to go so that it's easier for you to do your block prep. I'm going to take a piece of paper, stick it in my baggie, and then bag this up and move on to F9. Next is F9, and F9 is worked from the book, which, interestingly enough, this center is a lot bigger than this center, which comes into play because this piece of paper is a lot bigger than the center. So it's more emulating this block than this block. So this is the center for this block and then you have footballs and you have these pieces so these pieces are going to nest right in here and so they're going to fit just fine but the footballs are just a little smaller and there's only there's two other bigger ones here but clearly they're not the right size 
So this is the only option that we have. So what we're going to do is when we lay this out, we're going to obviously put these where they were, where they're supposed to go. And then when we go to, when we go to assemble, we're going to find the center of this piece and then just put these where they look natural. And whatever way we do that, we're going to do that the same way on all four sides. So that basically you're going to get this effect with these pieces. And these are small enough where you can give, give some room to maneuver. So that's what we're going to do. But for this, for the footballs here, I'm just going to lay them over here so I can label them and mark them up. So I got my pieces laid out and now it's time to label them F9. Now it's time to mark the focus fabric and it's real easy on this one. The center piece, center star, whatever you want to call it, is focus fabric and all of the little footballs are focus fabric. If you have a directional fabric, go ahead and indicate that now. I'm going to bag this up and move on to my next block. Next is F10. F10 is a modified block and they've taken this to a little bit of a simpler execution, but the, the block is still the same. So we got little kite pieces that go in the corner. We've got um, angled pieces, thicker and thinner, which are kind of obvious where they go. So, you know, the thinner goes on the outside and the thicker goes in the middle. And then I got a center square which I think I only have one option left, which would be this one, all right? Yep. So let me get these all in place. Got my pieces laid out on my booklet, and now I'm going to label them all F10. So I got my pieces all labeled. Now I need to label my focus fabric. And they're a little different because these have little outside edges. But what I'm going to do is we're going to do the center square, which means the outer, the, the inner layer needs to be background. So then the outer layer needs to be focus fabric. And the corners are going to be focus fabric as well. If you have directional fabric, go ahead and label it now. I'm going to bag this up with my F10 baggie and move on to the next one. Next, we're up to F11. F11 is a modified block, so we're going to work from the booklet. So we have the pie pieces, which are going to be applique on. So I'm going to set those aside over here so we can label them. And we have these darts for all the practical purposes. And there are two shapes here, one with a point in the center and one's with a point on the other side. And obviously these are points on the other side. And these must be the pieces. There we go. So I have squares for the corner, which are these, and then I have triangles for the big pieces here, which are similar to that, but are fatter. So this one would be the way to go, which, and they're not equilateral. So I have to mark. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center here so that when I, when I go to figure out which one this is, then I can know which point goes into the center, which reminds me on the other block, we're going to have to label the center as well. There's one with the four squares and the one center that's bigger. I should have marked the center of that square. But anyway, so let me go ahead and lay out these pieces and we'll move on from there. I got my pieces laid out and I'm going to label them all F11. Now I got to mark my focus fabrics and the focus fabrics 
are going to be the dark fabrics here. So the, the darts are going to be background. So the squares are going to be focus fabric. And then the big triangles are going to be focus fabric. And the darts are going to be background. And the little pie shapes are going to be background also. I want to make sure I'm going to take a pen here. And I'm going to mark an arrow as to which ones go into the center. That way I know when I go to put them together that I got the right way going on. And then I'm going to mark my indicators on my piece or on my block so I know exactly what's going on. So I'm going to bag this up in my F11 baggie and I can move on to the next page. Next is F12. F12 is also a modified block. So I'm going to go from the book here. This is where the other darts are going to come into play. The ones that had the center point. And then we're going to have the odd-shaped triangles. And then I've got triangles here and here. So let me get my pieces all laid out. I believe the triangles here and here are the same size but we are going to go check that out. So I've got my pieces laid out and now I'm going to label them F12. Now it's time to label my focus fabric. So the darts are going to be background again on this block. The big triangles are going to be uh, focus fabric, excuse me. And the corners are background. And these inside here are focus fabric as well. Mark your directional fabrics if you have one. I will bag this up and put on the last block of the bag. F13 is the last block of the bag. And we have one four and a half inch square that was in the bag from when we opened it on the first bag sort and that would be for this block. And then we have four pieces. We have two circles and we have two footballs. Very straightforward block. And then I'm gonna label them because that's what we do. And if, if you've got like a fussy cutting kind of a thing going on with your quilt, this is kind of a fun one to do with something in the circles or whatever you want to do. The focus fabric on this is going to be the shapes. And the background is going to be the square. So label your directional if you have them or have fun with your fussy cutting. And this, once I bag this up, this completes the row F bag number two bag sort video.